Yes, we'll rally round the flag, boys, we'll rally once again. Shout in the battle cry of freedom. We will rally from the hillside, we'll gather from the plain. Shout in the battle cry of freedom. The Union forever, hurrah, boys, hurrah. Down with the traitors, up with the stars, while we rally round the flag, boys, rally once again. Shout in the battle cry of freedom. Springing to the call of our brothers gone before. Shouting the battle cry of freedom. And we'll fill the vacant ranks with a million free men more. Shouting the battle cry of freedom. The Union forever. Hurrah, boys, hurrah. Down with the traitors, up with the stars. While we rally round the flag, boys, rally once again. To our numbers, the loyal, true, and brave. Shouting the battle cry of freedom. And although they may be poor, not a man shall be a slave. Shouting the battle cry of freedom. The Union forever. Hurrah, boys, hurrah. Down with the traitors, up with the stars. While we rally round the flag, boys, rally once again. Shouting the battle cry of freedom. So we're springing to the call from the east and from the west. Shouting the battle cry of freedom. And we'll hurl a rebel crew from the land we love the best. Shouting the battle cry of freedom. The Union forever. Hurrah, boys, hurrah. Down with the traitors, up with the stars. Once again, shouting the battle cry of freedom, the Union forever, hurrah, boys, hurrah, down with the traitors, up with the stars, while we rally round the flag, boys, rally once again, shouting the battle cry of said what I need to say, I just gives me absolute great pleasure to introduce the U.S. Democratic Congressional candidate, Keisha Rogers. All right, everyone, so I'm happy to see each and every one of you here today. And as Alicia said, we have a great fight in front of us, and that fight uh, is being taken up by a great moment in history, which each and every one of you are active participants in. And that moment in history is represented by your decision to fight for this nation and fight for the ideas in which our great republic has long represented. And so I'd like to say that this Memorial Day weekend, we will honor those lives who have gone on before us, those lives uh, who were given in great battle, in great war, and who fought to protect and defend our nation by leading the fight to kick the traitors out of the United States and leading the fight to take down the British Empire because that's what it's about. If we want a nation right now, it is going to require every effort possible to remove those forces from the United States that have acted against the interests of our Constitution and the well-being of our nation. And that starts with uh, the immediate impeachment of our President Obama and moving rapidly toward a, an emergence of a real economic recovery in our nation. Because the reality that we're facing in this great moment of crisis is that if we do not move rapidly for stopping the developments that we're seeing right now in the United States of complete turmoil uh, and uh, operation against the United States and against the citizens of this country, uh, then we won't have a nation. And this is where we're at right now. And 
you should take a look around this room and see yourselves as those who will be leading the forces and who will continue to lead the forces on the ground that will determine the decision of whether or not we, were, we will go on as a nation that is embodying those principles of leadership that was once represented by the great ideas and battles that were taken up by people such as Franklin Roosevelt or Lincoln. Whether or not we're going to embody those ideas that are represented by this core of thinking of human identity and creativity as a real sovereign nation state, as a republic, embodying the principles and ideas of a renaissance, which as you saw here today, we're invoking that principle in the United States right now. Our campaign is taking on that fight. And you listen to the music that we were singing, and most people might say, oh, that sounds nice. But we're saying that unless you have that conception of human identity in mind, of fighting for a nation and the principles in which it represents, and the ideas in which have built, has built this nation up, then you have nothing to live for. That you're, you don't have a foundation of a great power representing that essence of what is to be known as human creativity. And so we are here to give you that great optimism and what you actually have to live for and what you have to fight for, which is the ideas which we have come to understand over the course of 3,000 years of history. And this, was, this is what has given our organization and my leadership capacity uh, represented through the ideas and embodiment of the last 40, 50 years of the fight of Lyndon LaRouche, who's been the only long-term economic forecaster who has put this notion of human identity not in some superficial understanding of money or some superficial understanding of an identity based on popularity or, or what we've seen in our society <laughs> which is, you know, become the role of Hollywood and so forth, but an identity that has been based in what is your role in the future? What is your role, should I say, in history? And how do you embody that role in history? And so each and every one of you has a, a mission. Uh, as we look today on our fight in leading the forces uh, in the United States that are rapidly emerging throughout the world. The fight that's rapidly emerging in the population against the enemies of the United States. That people are going against the sellouts and the traitors in the Congress. And they're saying uh, all throughout the nation, you are seeing people uh, who are rising up to the occasion of running for office, who've never run for office before in their lives people who are taking on certain political leadership. And I can tell you that's what our campaigns in the United States with the LaRouche Youth Movement is representing and what the population is looking to for real leadership. And if you think about the strength that it takes to run a campaign of this nature, especially in the grave crisis that we're facing right now, uh, you know, I didn't see myself uh, standing up here before taking on this, this type of leadership and, uh, you know, you look at the people who are in office and people say, well, young lady, you have some nice ideas, you sound good, but I don't think you have enough experience or <laughs> I don't think you've, you know, gathered enough friends in the right places and so, you know, maybe that, that's a cute idea, you want to run for Congress and so forth. But you look at how the American people are responding and they are looking for unwavering, uncompromising leadership. And if you take a look at what we're seeing in our Congress, what we just saw uh, take place last week around the debate for a <laughs> 
Glass-Steagall Amendment put forth by Senators McCain and Cantwell, which showed signs of patriotism, which showed signs that there is a, a sense of life and a fight going on in Congress. But what happened with that? Well, what happened is that it was a clear identity of what you have in the United States of the representation, not of a Republican versus a Democratic Party, because that's out the window, but a fight in the nation of the true patriots versus the traitors. And what happened is that as you had a fight in Congress to pass the Glass-Steagall Amendment, reenact Glass-Steagall, which would have put back on the table the solutions for putting an end to the bailouts, putting an end to the speculative gambling activity, and moving our nation on the road toward a real economic recovery, the, those individuals who actually went in, starting with the Obama administration and key lackeys of the Obama administration and those of the Wall Street and London financial interests, went in and said, we got to put a stop to this because our interest is to act on behalf of the Wall Street and London uh, financial interests of the British Empire instead of acting to defend those the well-being of the nation-state. And so this is a fight that we're still waging that, and we're continuing to wage throughout the entire population that unless you have a rapid move toward a reorganization of the banking system, putting, this, uh, putting forth the policies represented by Franklin Roosevelt in 1933, which would center around, uh, as Mr. LaRouche is calling today, and as my campaign is wholeheartedly endorsing, a global Glass-Steagall, a return to a credit system which is going to invest in the long-term infrastructure which is needed for rebuilding our nation again and rebuilding those great powers in which our nation represented. We have to give our, our nation a sense of mission once again. And that mission is going to come from producing, from building things. And we build things by recognizing those creative aspects in our society, which we've long gone away from. And I can tell you, we wouldn't have these types of decisions uh, being made to capitulate and to sell out the American people in Congress if you had people who actually place their identity in this sense of history of never wavering and never compromising your principles. And you, you can take the example of President Lincoln. And President Lincoln's fight for the nation represented not in some two-way battle between freeing slaves, not freeing slaves, but a recognition of all of those principles of our foundations uh, and foundation of our Constitution, that all men are created equal. And they're created equal with their power uh, and what they have uh, come to develop as that, cre that creative powers of the power of the human mind. And so if you look at what we're seeing in our society today, we're losing that sense of understanding. And you have to have that sense of understanding if you're going to take on the, the battle that Lincoln did when he was challenged by, by many to say that he didn't really care about the nation or saving the union that he didn't really care about freeing the slaves. He had a, a, a different agenda. Well, he couldn't have had a different agenda when you think about what we saw come out of that development, from the development of the Transcontinental Railway to the development of massive uh, projects in our university system around the, the uh, bringing forth of the ag agricultural programs that came out of the Lincoln administration, through the development of mass infrastructure projects. And you saw that that was the means of 
Lincoln's fight to do as we're calling for today, to kick the traitors out of the United States. That if you had this conception of a human identity in advancing one's creative potential, then you can actually lead a nation once again to embody those ideas of, of a great nation. And that's what Lincoln did. And you take the example of what we embody and continue to, to fight for in the Democratic Party, the ideas of Franklin Roosevelt, where I can tell you many people in the Democratic Party today have said Franklin Roosevelt is old news. You know, it, that's a done deal. Well, we're saying without Roosevelt, who understood and made clear to Churchill and his British Empire that we weren't going to allow their colonization and British Empire to uh, dominate the world any longer, that we were going to fight against that. Without that, our, we, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have a nation. Without his commitment to kicking out the traitors and saying that we were going to invest in that understanding of great infrastructure projects, taking on the essence of the history that he recognized where his grandfather, Isaac Roosevelt, was in great communication with the, uh, remember, remembering his grandfather, Isaac Roosevelt, and his collaboration with one of our great founding fathers, uh, Alexander Hamilton. And think about the fact that Alexander Hamilton, in writing our nation's preamble to the Constitution, which gives the identity and sets the precedent for everything and all principles embodied in our Constitution, Ro Roosevelt understood that. Roosevelt understood his identity uh, in that history where Alexander Hamilton put forth the notion of a credit system in our Constitution which would allow us to take that creative power of the human mind and allow it to flourish in massive infrastructure development from the creation of dams and bridges, uh, agro-industrial development, to investing in uh, long, massive long-term infrastructure projects, even including the outlook for our uh, space program that, that Kennedy continued to take up uh, a bit after that. And so I can tell you that each and every one of you here today are representing that identity of true American patriots. And it's going to be your responsibility as, you know, some people might have decided today that uh, they're going to put politics down and try to avoid the reality of the crisis and what's going on and go have a six pack or go and, <laughs> go and do whatever. But the real identity that we should be embodying this Memorial Day weekend is remembering those lives who have dedicated, who were dedicated to the fight for a nation, to the fight for a republic. And going out this Memorial Day weekend and slashing some Congress members and the president and so forth who has forgotten what those principles are. And you got your uh, congressional representatives coming back into town this weekend. Uh, they may be in hiding. I don't know. I'm not in hiding. I don't have anything to hide. <laughs> I'm ready to take on the population. Uh, they may not be ready to take on the population because they might meet some uh, un- uh, welcome, welcoming faces, but we have to go out there and actually mobilize a real, continue to mobilize a real fight amongst the population. 
And I mean, if you take, for instance, the fact that this process in which we've seen unfold uh, identified as a mass strike ferment in the population, I mean, it is brewing in a way that we have not seen in quite some time. And it's happening all across the nation. Uh, you can take, for example, the fact that the president went to a fundraiser event in California and uh, for Senator Barbara Boxer. And I'll, I'll tell you, anything that the president is touching right now is not, <laughs> is not doing good at all. It's like, you know, people like to take poison or something because they invite this president in and everything he touches turns and, you know, wilts. So, um, I didn't invite him to my meeting, <laughs> just to let you know. But this is, this is the fight that we've been waging, because you have to be honest about where we're at right now. Anybody, Democrats or Republicans, that are holding on to the coattail of the traitors, particularly the president that has acted in the interest of Wall Street and London, and is a puppet and a tool to that same financial interest, that has worked to destroy the sovereignty of our nation should really think again about you know their uh, morality and about what they represent in society because they've lost that sense of of identity and mission and commitment to a nation and so you if you take I'll just um, if you take the last nine months of this fight that's been brewing in the population, um, starting back with what happened back in August of 2009, uh, and I remember some of you guys out in the rallies and uh, town hall meetings, uh, you might have remembered uh, meeting and running into the LaRouche Youth Movement and our campaigns uh, with a, a friendly mustache on the president. And I'll tell you, many people thought, oh my goodness, they're, they've gone too far. But no, we were absolutely right. At that time, when the health care debate and reform, health care reform was taking place, and we identified that as a Nazi policy and a policy that was against the interests of the United States, acting in the interests of the London Wall Street financial interests, and particularly the HMOs and insurance companies. But more importantly, we said this is the means of what is going to be used for stopping development and uh, destroying the lives of our citizens. That's what we're seeing right now. That's what we're seeing as you see the fight taking place to cut Medicare, to cut Medicaid, to budget people's lives, to say that you have lives that are unworthy or not worthy to be lived. That is what we're seeing coming out of the policies of President Obama and his economic advisors. And they've made it clear that that's what their policy is. So if you don't call that fascist, I don't know what is. But what we're doing and saying right now is that people have to have courage. And they have to take leadership to tell the truth. And that's what, that's what we've done. And as we've gone out and you look at what we did in the campaign uh, back in March, where people saw us on their street corners. They saw us uh, at their intersections, at their homes, at their community centers. They saw us um, wherever they went with giant banners reading Save NASA, Impeach Obama. And when we took on the fight in the population to encourage people to take responsibility for the nation, to demand real leadership, that's what they did. And so we won 53% of the vote when my campaign, when I won 53% of the vote, the 
Democratic Party said, oh no, we have to put a stop to this. <laughs> and that's what they tried to do. They said, the, Ameri the American voters in the 22nd district, they, they didn't know what they were talking about, they didn't know what they were doing, and so we're going to pretend that it never happened. But unfortunately, they can't do that because we're still out there and we're not going anywhere. And, <laughs> and we are more than ever getting uh, support and representation out on the streets because we didn't put forth a slogan in the campaign saying, save NASA and Pete Obama, now let's go to sleep. <laughs> we, said, we said that you have to continue this fight until the job is done. Because if you don't, you're, you're going to be hard pressed to have a nation. And that's, that's where we are right now. And we're continuing the fight by not just going out and telling people that we have to impeach the president or having a slogan about saving NASA, but we're telling people that if you don't actually take responsibility, then it's going to be your fault if we no longer have a republic. Because as Benjamin Franklin says, I give you a republic if you can keep it. And that's, that's your role. And what my campaign is doing now is we're taking this this optimistic vision that people have to come to understand and embody of a mission orientation for the future that understanding that the fight to save NASA and our understanding of that and all of the young people here today that are working with me and working with Mr. LaRouche and taking up that fight know that it's not just about not at all about saving jobs or you know, just developing the, uh, the community. But it's about one's commitment at, to the future. That people, I mean, you think about it. People right now are looking at the situation that's going on with NASA, and they're scared. And people are sitting back and saying, man, I have to do everything in my power to keep my job. I have to do everything in my power to make sure that I get one up over the other person there because we're in competition to, you know, hold on to something, uh, to, to, to our small, to our projects or to hold on to uh, what we've known for many years. But I'll ask you, where are these people today? Are they willing to fight with the identity and understanding that if we don't have NASA, if we don't have a vision for new frontiers for mankind, such as that vision which was represented during the development of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, or the great settlers came over to the United States representing and wanting to develop a mission for future generations, to set forth a new frontier for mankind and to flourish and develop uh, in ways that had never been done before. And that's what NASA represents, is that identity embodied in this understanding that your commitment to the future lies in providing a means for breakthroughs in new scientific, technological advancements and creative discoveries. And so as we're going out and talking to the population on how this fight must be waged and why it must be waged, you know, we're saying don't just get angry, get educated. Because that's what we need right now is to educate the population on the great historical ideas of why and how a commitment 
to one's, one's immortality, let's put it that way, is going to be your understanding of how you find. And if you take, for instance, the fact that, you know, I'll, I'll say that uh, just a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to, to go for a three-week tour to Europe. And we had several meetings there and discussions um, on what the world was facing and what the United States' role was in shaping the potential for a renaissance and a, 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 a real recovery in the world. But what I had the opportunity to experience there was something that I had never experienced before. As I went to many of the cathedrals and the great monuments uh, that were built, probably over 1,200 plus years ago. And I stood in front of these cathedrals and thought about the individuals that were building them. And I had to say, well, what were these people committed to? Were they only committed to you know, a short-term satisfaction? Or were they saying, wow, do we have the budget and the means to build something of this great quality? Were they waiting on Congress to send them down a, a discretionary fund? No. They were saying that we have a mission for giving back and for providing a future for those who, who live after us. And that's how we have to think today. You know, if everyone's sitting around, you know, thinking about the, you know, monetary values of society, instead of thinking about what is your human identity in society, how do we kick this monetary system and the British monetary system out the window and start providing for the nation again? start building for the nation again, then we're no longer going to have a nation. And so that's why it's, that's why we, we take joy now in looking to the post-Obama era, the post-Obama world which is soon to come because if you look at the developments that are taking place right now, the fact that there is a rapid hatred and despise to this Congress selling out the American people and especially as Alicia said to the incumbents, but also to the president who more and more is becoming despised by the American people because he has shown himself to not be representing that interest of our nation, but acting on behalf of a foreign interest. And so if you take a look at the fact that, one, you have this health care reform that uh, was put forth despite the, despite the uh, disagreements and the fight in the American population. If you look at the fact that we have now uh, the president acting to shut down NASA, uh, shut down manned space flight, and taking away that vision in which was represented by leaders such as Kennedy and Roosevelt. And if you look at what's going on with the fight in British Petroleum, where the president has made clear on who, he, who he's siding with, and it's not the American people. It's not the American families. I mean, you can speak a good game on that, but it's, it's not true. But it is the British interest. And if you look at what's happening with the fight around the developments of uh, what's going on in Afghanistan, 
You know, we're celebrating, uh, we're commemorating Memorial Day today, but we have our soldiers that are being sent into Afghanistan to protect and defend the poppy fields and opium crops in the interest of the British Empire and the London Wall Street financial interests. And we should think about that as we see people wanting to say that they're going to continue to hold on to the coattails of a president who is rapidly going down. But I think that if we actually once again put ourselves in the position as fighters for this republic and put ourselves in the position of, as I pointed out before, of uncompromising and unwavering leadership, then we will know to make how to make the right decisions and how to commit our lives and our identity to the immortality of knowing that we all have a, a limited time here on earth. And our limited time is going to be, it's going to really be represented by what we decide to do with our lives and how we decide to, to live it and what we decide to represent as our gift to the future of mankind. And I mean, because if you look at where we are today, if there, as the same goes, is if there is no vision, the people will perish. And we have to keep that from happening because our responsibility and our fight and we're what we're going to continue to do in this campaign is give people a sense of, of that mission and how they take that on. And why it's going to be up to us to invest in those new scientific discoveries, invest in those new frontiers uh, which bring forth greater economic developments, those fr new frontiers and, and, and questions which should be asked by each and every one of us, by all human thinking minds that what that have an, an inclination to explore and discover. You know, as we're talking about transforming mankind, that transformation is going to come through empowering this creative potential in man and saying, well, how are we going to get to Mars? How are we going to take on those challenges of what is needed to have colonies on Earth and on Mars continuing to uh, transform each, each one? How are we going to build uh, colonies and, and new developments on, on the moon? And this is what our youth movement uh, with Mr. LaRouche and my campaign is going out and educating the population on. And I'll tell you, each, you guys should come out uh, each week. We have a team of young people that are giving classes and presentations on the history of the United States, on the scientific questions that have to be posed if we're to answer uh, and to actually uh, provide solutions to this crisis in which confronts us now. And uh, we actually have these meetings right down the street at the local coffee shop, the Oasis coffee shop. But that's what you have to do. Uh, it's not enough to come to meetings and listen and sit back and then go home and, you know, say that was nice. Now I have to go back to reality. I got a wife and kids and family and so forth. But you have to take responsibility to get everyone in this fight. And so, uh, before I turn it over to, to Harley, I'll just make 
uh, just make the point that uh, once again, that we are in a grave period for mankind. We are in a historic period for mankind. And the decision that you make today will determine what happens for many generations to come. And so uh, that's why I ask that you continue to help my fight and continue to back our fight as we go out and organize and educate the population.